It's just way too much food for me. So I stopped at friends of mine, uh, Patrick and Marietta Bentley. Uh, Marietta runs the local Martha's, the CBRF here in Princeton. And I said, I need your help. And they kind of looked at me and I kept bringing out the boxes and so forth and put them on their counter. And when we opened it up, it was a whole turkey and everything that went with it. And I said, I'll take enough for two meals, but what we're going to have to do is this. I, I want you to take the rest of it down to Martha's you know, on Monday, and then they can have a great Easter dinner on Shula Vista and on me. So I got two meals, and because of the generosity of Shula, you know, these uh, Martha's got a whole meal that, that was an Easter dinner. But I, I thought about it and I thought, in many ways, 
but that's like the uh, multiplication of loaves and fish. You know, I asked for just a little bit and thought I would get just one meal, and it turns out to be an abundance that a whole group of people you know, could enjoy you know, and could celebrate together. So I think when we think of Easter, we should think of things like that that happen in our life, that if we reflect on them and think about them, we can see great miracles taking place. And maybe in this time when we've got this coronavirus and there's a lot of dismay, you know, we can find hope in the small things that are going on in our lives every day. So it's with that spirit that I'm glad that you're here with me and I'm glad that you enjoyed uh, the past presentations. I hope you'll enjoy this presentation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to communal life, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, 
for he is good, his love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the boat builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for in his great mercy he gave us a new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you by the power of God, our safeguarded through faith, to the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the Jews were, disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Bring your hand, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. 
Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, thank you for joining me as we celebrate this Sunday after Easter. There was a person by the name of Bubba who walked into a doctor's office. And when he walked in, the receptionist said to him, What do you have? And he said, Shingles. And then she took down, first of all, his birth date. Then his name, his address, and his insurance. And she said, go over there and sit down for a while now. So he went over and sat down. And after a while, the nurse's aide came and said, what do you have? And he said, shingles. And she took down, once again, his birth date, you know, his height, his weight, you know, and his medical records, and said, now sit here. And so he sat for another period of time, and then a nurse came up, and a nurse said, what do you have? And he said, shingles. And so she took his blood pressure, you know, she did an electrocardiogram, you know, and said, now, come into the doctor's office, take off all your clothes, and sit on this uh, bed. And so he did. He took off all his clothes, and he waited patiently for a half hour until the doctor came. The doctor came in and said, what do you have? And he said, shingles. And the doctor said, where? And he said, out on my truck outside. Where do you want them unloaded? When we think of our good friend Bubba, he was probably not a happy camper because nobody would really listen to him. They just went through their routine and never gave him a chance to talk. And we can think of him as that unhappy camper. But today we might think of Jesus as an unhappy camper when it came to Thomas. You know, because you know, Thomas, uh, once again, you know, just did not listen to those who said, you know, we have seen the Lord. You know, he is risen. Thomas is overriding them with his own thoughts and saying, you know, unless I see the embarks in his hands, you know, I see the wound in his side, I won't believe it. We could think of how you know, Thomas is going to change. You know, and I think one of the things that gives us a lot of reason to hope is that our Lord circles around and comes at him again. You know, and he's going to come back a second time and he's going to say, Thomas, you know, put your finger right here. Put your hand right here. And it's then you know, that Thomas becomes a believer and says, my Lord and my God. Another example of that that we could think about is Peter. You know, Peter denies our Lord three times in the garden. But then, later on, after the resurrection, our Lord is going to circle back and come back to him. You know, and he's going to say, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's going to say three times, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. I think there's a great lesson for us to be learned about the mercy of God. You know, think in our own lives, how many times have we just written somebody off because of something that they've said, and we've never circled back to them again? 
Or somebody has written us off you know, and never circled back again you know, to be our friend. But it, the, the great lesson is that our Lord does this in our lives and he'll do it as often as we want. We could ask, him, ask ourselves, you know, who am I at this point? Am I the one who heard and believed? Or, and we could say that Mary Magdalene, for instance, heard the Lord say, Mary, and then she responds with, Rabboni, I believe. Or are we the one who saw and believed? You know, John went into that empty tomb, and he saw and believed. The people in the gospel today, you know, see the risen Lord, see those marks, you know, and see and believe. Thomas, at first, is the person who doubts and wants to know more. Which person are we? I think the important lesson is that the Lord will meet us wherever we are. The only thing that we have to do is open that door. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us, pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a contrite heart. Lord, wash away our iniquities and cleanse us of our sins. And fellow Christians, pray that the gifts and the Mass that we offer may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, 
and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Donald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. And thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.